Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for watching. Today we're starting a new series of videos. We're calling it Demo to Master, where we explain how we take a demo from an artist, band, singer, songwriter, and all the steps in between to finish it into a completed master. And what's really interesting, this is during the pandemic, this is an all virtual production. So we hope you enjoy the video. So please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We really appreciate your support. Let's dig in. This first tune is called My Heart by singer-songwriter Mike Kelly. So let's look at our session. So this is the initial session that I got from Mike. Mike did everything at home in GarageBand. His guitars were all track virtual, all the loops and other elements were done in GarageBand, and he did all his vocals at home in GarageBand. So what I did was I imported everything, I color-coded it, and I took a first listen, so let's do the same. I'll play up to a little bit into the chorus so you get an idea. So it has a pretty well-developed arrangement is the first thing I'm checking out. I like the groove, I like the vocals. Cool. So overall, it's a really great song, good hook, cool arrangement ideas, nice vocals. So how can we improve it without changing it too much? I always ask clients, what are you looking for? What do you want it to sound like? So Mike gave me four or five songs that he liked certain aspects of, whether it was the guitars, the vocals, the drums. So I download them and I keep them in the session to refer to as we're moving along. So this is the initial session and the tracks from Mike. So what did I hear? How can we improve this? Okay, number one, the tempo. Maybe it's a little slow. When we got to the pre-chorus and there was that counting part right over here, So when the counting got to seven, eight, nine, to me it was too much. It should have been half. So I suggested do one, two, three, four on the first pre-chorus, and then five, six, seven, eight if that worked, and he was in agreement. So also in that pre-chorus section, I heard that there was some odd harmonies in the background, so I discussed with Mike about using background singers. Because sometimes when one person sings everything, it starts to sound like a jingle or a demo to me. So I always feel like having a couple other voices is helpful. And I also mentioned to Mike that I think he should be doubling, tripling, quadding all his vocals. And he wanted to try that because he's never really done that. So after we discussed all of this, the first thing I want to do is go in and get the drums really slamming and help the groove of the tune. I'll take that session, save it as a new one, and I'll start importing some things from my pre-production template. I think working from templates is great. If you've seen my other videos, I always talk about it. So if everything's right there under your fingertips, you can really try to get through ideas quickly and nothing's really hindering your creativity. So if you notice what I did here, all the green is vocals. So I muted all the vocals I didn't want to hear and just kind of worked off of the ones that I felt would help me get to the bottom of things without being distracting. So let's pop up here and you'll start to see some things that I added. So at the top of the tune, uh, Mike had this part going. So we had this little uh, filtered kind of loop thing going on at the very top of the tune, which was cool. So we left that in. I didn't mess with that. So, so let me check out 
hear what's going on. So if you see anything that says MK, these are Mike's drum parts. So I relabel them, and I also might have done some editing to them. You can see they're a little chopped up. So let's check that out and see what's going on. So I edited them down a little bit, tightened them up. I think they sound really good, but it needs more. So let's see what we added. First thing we added was right down here, these pop drums. So this is a superior drummer from the Easy Drummer set. And what I like about this, it's a great kit to put in in the, in the front of a tune, like in a verse, it's, it sounds cool, it's funky, and it's, it's, it's tight, and it's small. Then I can blow it up with another kit later. So let's flip to the next part of the puzzle. I added this 808 kick. No superior set. So it's starting to come together a little. And now we have our, my main drum set that's going to be used quite a bit in the chorus, which is the uh, Rock Foundry Bob Rock drums. This is a really, really good kit. So I mainly use this just for the snare. It's got that big weighty snare in the verses. So now let's see about percussion. The Latin percussion. Expansion. So let's check out that whole thing we have here and then we'll jump to a chorus. So you notice I have another kit layered. So I really like the sound of uh, that kick and snare. So everything combined now, let's hear the whole, whole thing at that point in the chorus. Here's where we are right now with the newer drums that I added and some editing on his drums. Now you're gonna notice that you're gonna hear snares and kicks flamming. I'm gonna take care of that later. I just don't want to go too deep in the weeds because I wanted him to hear it. I wanted to make sure he dug it. And then I didn't want to have to like do a lot of extra work and then redo it if we change something. So check it out. So the goal with that was to beef up the drums and start to push the song in a direction that I felt it, it needed to go in that we talked about. Session number three, I wanted to look into the bass before I fine-tuned the drums more, worked on the form and the tempo a bit. So I felt his bass part was, was pretty cool and I wanted to keep a lot of the ideas, but I just the sound just wasn't making it. And as I made the drums bigger, it, it doesn't really cut. So what I used to accomplish our bass sound was multiple layers of the Trillion bass module. So you can see we have this TR bass, a sub Juno 106. Here's the bass solid. You can see it's just the first two firing off in these sections. And then when the chorus comes in, you'll see three blinking, and I'll solo that for you. Let's check that out in the chorus, that throbbing bass sound, which is this one. So let's jump out now to our third session, did a little more work on the drums, and we also printed out some of the bass sounds once we knew they were established. So the bass is a great place to start early on in your production because I feel it's, it's a good area to create a second hook, like a sub hook to the vocal, support the vocal, but it's also an integral part of the rhythm section. So we were pretty happy with everything. We had changed the tempo. 
and put it up a notch. We have all of Mike's drums, and you'll see some things start to come in here. So like transitions or handoffs are really important because it calls attention to something new happening. And then we have this. Sub drop. So we have a snare bomb also with the sub drop to give us a good downbeat into the, into the pre-chorus, I mean chorus. Now I also added, we have shaker, tambourine, and a tambourine, let's play eighth note, so let's listen to those. This is the chorus. Then we have over here in the verses, we have these from the pop kit. There's some good snaps and claps. So in our chorus, I added this 808 clap to sign a kick the snare drum a little bit. So here's the clap. And here's the snare. And the kick. So let's listen to uh, just the drums and percussion that we put together at this point in the chorus. And you'll notice at the beginning of it, you heard a reverse cymbal. So we had that, and we also added this reverse piano and, a, and an octave down version of it to give us a good transition right into the chorus. So now here's all the basses that we printed. Let's check those in the chorus. And then you got the throbbing bass also in the chorus. So you'll see I have this TR bass low that happens in the verses. So that's just an octave down from the other TR bass. And the reason I felt like we needed it was we were duplicating the melody, which was cool. When the throb bass came in in the chorus, I felt like we had this really extended low end, and we didn't have that much of it in the verse, so that balanced out the low end a little bit. So I added these stabs, because I wanted to have this kind of Prince Mars Day thing going on, which I can't go wrong with that. So that was a uh, Omnisphere, I think. So over here, we boosted up the ending with this extra synth, which is uh, the Anna 2 synth uh, from Slate Digital. So at that point, at the end of the chorus, he's singing My Heart, and it's going to be a big like shout chorus at the end. So I wanted to accentuate it because it is the hook and it is the title of the song. So I dropped that second synth in there. Now he had like a little um, little lead synth part down here and I kept that. And then the only thing I actually, other thing I added in the keyboard was right here. So the, the idea of that came from he, he played his guitar solo himself and I wanted to keep it. I liked it. I thought it sounded cool and it sort of bordered on like synthy rather than just guitar. I felt like this would be a cool hook to have underneath it. And then you can see later I reintroduced it in the out chorus to build that. So check it out. And it pops in here to give the second of the chorus double at the end a little lift. So thanks for watching. There you have it, our first video in our series, Demo to Master. 
our first video on My Heart by Mike Kelly. Stay tuned in the next one. We're going to cover what we did with all the guitars and some arrangement ideas. And please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We really appreciate it. Stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you on the next one.